Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today in our first inaugural Craft Chats. My name is Katherine Hall, and I'm the curator at Houston Center for Contemporary Craft. And I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to uh, come explore some art with me. So before we begin, I wanted to thank everybody for your patience as we're quickly working to reopen. Uh, today, I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek at our upcoming exhibition, Metaformation, Contemporary Approaches uh, to Blacksmithing. And um, I also wanted to plug a few virtual events that we have uh, coming up in the next few weeks. Um, this weekend, the Saturday, actually, our very own Tarina Frank will be demoing um, and conducting a workshop on um, melt and pour soap. And we actually have had some great registrations so far. And I was told that the registration closes uh, this evening at midnight for a Saturday workshop. So please make sure if you're interested to go check out the event page. If you go to crafthouston.org and then click on events that should direct you to all the events that we have going on, including the registration for the Mountain Core Workshop. Other events that we have, uh, we are still doing our first Saturday of the month, Hands on Houston, but at present we're doing Hands on Houston to go, which is a free craft activity that you can actually come by and pick up and take home and work on uh, from home. So please stay tuned this first Saturday in October. Uh, we will be doing polymer clay monsters, which should be a lot of fun. And then uh, another thing to mark your calendars for is on October 1st, and this will go all the way through the 4th of October, we are bringing back our cups for y'all. And we're really excited to um, work with a number of different makers. Uh, they were selected by Anna Walker. Um, who is curator over at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. Um, this will be a virtual only uh, Cups for Y'all event. So again, check our event page for more details on how to uh, purchase cups in our virtual cup sale. So this format for Craft Chats, uh, we're actually gonna start out with a presentation that I'm gonna give. Uh, for about the first 20 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to chime in in the chat. Um, we have wonderful colleagues here that are assisting me today. Um, Maria Lisa Hegg, our curatorial fellow, will be filming. And Natalie Swachina is going to be monitoring the feed. So we're going to actually hold all um, questions for the very end where we actually will switch the camera um, to the... Uh, exhibition space that you see behind me and that way we'll be able to get up close and personal with the works of art. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into the presentation. Just one moment. Okay, so a little bit of information about Metaformation, New Connections, and Contemporary Blacksmithing. This show originated uh, and it was organized by Rachel D David, who is a curator and metal worker who has now just recently located to Waynesville, North Carolina from New Orleans. Um, she invited three jurors one of which is uh, Sarah Darrow, who is former curatorial fellow at the Craft Center here in Houston. Um, Andy Cooperman, who is a metalsmith and jeweler from Seattle. And Haas Haley, who is a sculptor, a sculptor out of Spruce Pine, North Carolina. For uh, an open call that Rachel organized, uh, it was open to anyone who wanted to participate and then they uh, juried a selection of works from this open call. The exhibition originally debuted at the Appalachian Center for Craft, um, but we actually had the opportunity to travel the show here in Houston 
And Rachel and I discussed with the jurors and we were able to expand the show through an invitational portion that Rachel and I put together. So we're really excited to be able to include all of the original artists that were shown in Tennessee. And now um, we have an additional selection of artists that didn't participate in the original open call that we felt like were really um, incredible uh, blacksmiths, metal workers that needed to be included in this exhibition. So Metaformation is a survey uh, gives you really a snapshot of contemporary blacksmithing today and also how different metal workers are using the history of blacksmithing and uh, techniques related in blacksmithing in their work and reinterpreting that um, in unique ways. So today I just wanted to kind of highlight a selection of pieces from the show. And then when we open up to the question and answer period, I wanna invite everyone to be able to submit questions and we can get a closer look at the works up close and personal. So starting out, uh, I wanted to uh, take a moment to look at Rachel Kettinger's work. Rachel uh, really has a wonderful attention to detail in her blacksmithing. Um, this that you see here is a selection of her garden tools. And I really love how she's, you know, looking at the um, way that people would interact with her objects. So she's thinking about if you look at the handle, you know, they're designed so that you can hang them up if you'd like. Um, she has these really beautiful brass rivets that you can see that she's used to uh, connect the different um, iron uh, of these garden tools. And I think, you know, I wanted to include this piece because blacksmithing itself has a long-standing history of function. And I think there's some really beautiful, more traditional functional forms like Rachel's that are being made today. And then also another series of works that are functional in their own right um, is, are these incredible masks by Kess Schwartzman. So Kess is from Frederick, Maryland, and uh, she predominantly makes masks uh, in her practice. And what I love about these pieces is that she's taken the different um, forms of different animals and created uh, miniature masks based off of these different animal heads um, and thinking about uh, identity and thinking about identity uh, even with animals, she's kind of switching the different heads with the skulls that you see. So for instance, um, on the left-hand side, you can see this mink skull is wearing a mask that is out of a falcon shape, um, which, you know, you would think about a falcon um, maybe being a predator for a mink. Uh, and then you have uh, in the center, the chicken skull is wearing a mink mask, and then the mole on the far right is wearing a chicken mask. So I love the versatility of that and really kind of donning a new uh, sort of identity through the mask that she's making and really custom fitting it for these different skull forms. And then we turn to something on a much larger scale. This is work from uh, by Warren Holzman of Iron Studio in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Warren also teaches at Bryn Athen College right outside of Philly. Uh, and he really is a master metal worker. Uh, here you see a selection of his furniture pieces and they really are just incredible examples of uh, using a recousé technique, which is a technique that is used in um, ironwork where you're essentially hammering uh, the form into a relief using uh, hammering on the reverse side of the metal. So you can see where um, here, this is his joke chicken table on the left-hand side. And he's um, working to create this really um, quite comical relief of this chicken form coming out of the table. But then uh, when you look on to the piece on the right and the pig form, um, he's really even taking it a step further, making the pig head even more sculptural. Um, and really, I, I love even just the details of the ears 
um, that he's created and really kind of uh, a realistic portrayal of these animals that are very playful. Um, also love the, the details of, for instance, looking at the joke chicken table, you have that wonderful fringe that he is replicating around the, the skirt of the table. Um, and really just this attention to detail and texture that is, is really lovely. Then moving on to David Barnhill. Uh, David is really um, a masterful craftsman. Uh, this piece, uh, which we'll be able to get a closer look at when we get to the live portion, but it's entitled Emulation of Shaomi Katsuyoshi. And this piece is really kind of um, in homage to this incredible metalsmith from Japan who was making during the Meiji era from 1868 to 1912 is when he was alive. And he was really known for his organic forms and really um, just his technical virtuosity. And uh, here you have David who is also creating this really lovely organic form um, it's made in three parts. He's first uh, raising uh, copper by hand, so starts with a flat cylinder and then uh, hammers it um, into a vessel form. He's actually um, raised the individual components of the spikes as well. And if you look really closely, you'll be able to see all of the lovely um, hammer and chisel marks on the surface. And in the center, he's using a Japanese technique called Mokume Gane, which um, was originally created um, by uh, Japanese swordsmiths to decorate their swords. And it's a combination of metals that are used to create a wood grain like pattern. Um, and how you create that is you uh, make what's called a billet, which is really kind of like a, um, rectangular stick of metal that is made from different, it's a combination of different metals that then gets hammered down into these really ornate shapes to create the beautiful surface uh, that you see on the interior of this piece that models the wood grain pattern. And this particular makume is made from copper and nickel, which is what's giving you that lovely color there. Somebody else that's really looking at surface design um, and ornamentation is Seth Gould, who's uh, in Bakersville, North Carolina. Um, Seth has created this incredible lock that's inspired by 18th and 19th century locks. And he's also using a Japanese techni technique called Nunome Gane, which is translates to a woven cloth pattern. And, what he's actually doing and he is chiseling into um, the steel and then inlaying uh, 24 karat gold to create this beautiful geometric design. And I'm gonna show, um, switch screens for just a moment and show you a video of how his lock actually works. So you get a sense of the purpose of the surface design. So you can see here the lock that he's created has a very particular way that you turn the lock to lock it and unlock it. And if you notice, it actually turns the central circle of the geometric design. And it's called an indicator lock because only um, the person that knows the correct order to turn the key will line up the pattern that's on the front. If the pattern is not lined up, it indicates that there's a potential intruder that has breached the door. Um, here you see the inner workings of the, the backside of the lock as well. Um, and it's a really unique and very interesting piece. So going back to our presentation, I wanted to point out another um, mas master metal worker from, um, he's currently living in Pinland, North Carolina, David Harper Clemens, but he was born in El Paso and um, grew up and spent most of his time in the Austin area. And so we're really excited to be able to include his work in the show from a, a Texas native. This piece I think um, is 
absolutely incredible. Uh, I love all of the detail on it. Um, it's called the Overlooked Bread Basket Number One, and it's part of a long, longer series that's really paying um, homage to those essential workers that are often overlooked. So here he's really kind of reflecting on um, those yard workers that um, are even during this pandemic, one might think are still very necessary that um, this is a piece that's really kind of honoring them and the work that they do for, for our, um, our community. And uh, I love how he's um, created this piece in a, a bread basket, which is really kind of this um, gesture of thinking about creating community and breaking bread, sharing bread, and kind of that gesture of service that's kind of bound up into this object. And I think there's some really lovely details of this piece, such as he's created the handle out of a form that um, really is a rake and has included this beautiful ash wood as part of the handle. And then also really given a lot of care and attention to all the individual leaves that you see um, that are ornamenting the, the basket itself. Next, we have Johannes Postelmeier. And uh, Johannes is from Austria. This series was made when he was in school in Sweden. And it's part of his, uh, distorted geometric series where you is actually milling geometric patterns into the steel itself and then he's going and kind of giving up some control to a hydraulic press that when the metal is hot it's being used to press down on the material that really kind of um, creates these beautiful abstracted patterns um, within the metal itself. And I actually have a video that illustrates that a little bit better about how the hydraulic press works from Johannes. So here you see the finished piece um, and here's some really lovely detail of that work as well. So I love, you know, I, I bring up Johannes's work because he's really experimenting with material and I, I love really kind of that tension between the um, really precise um, way that he is creating these geometric structures by milling and then kind of allowing um, chance of the hydraulic press to really abstract those forms into these really lovely distorted studies. And another person who's really experimenting with material is Joshua Goss, who is from Greeley, Colorado. And this piece, Ductile Compression 10, um, is really kind of in reference to this idea of topography and the topography of the earth and thinking about how over time um, the, the earth itself gets compressed and through that pressure um, and the stratification of the soil, you really see these really wonderful striations of different materials um, that are really getting fused together with that pressure. And here, um, Joshua is replicating that process by um, really working with a different kind of um, set of uh, metals. So he's actually repurposing uh, 20th century um, iron. And then he's also working with a modern uh, recycled steel and stainless steel that he's superheating and then also working with a hydraulic press to really create a lot of pressure that mimics 
um, what one, what the earth would experience over a long standing period of time. Um, and it's a really beautiful piece that uh, you can really see um, all of the, the wonderful different coloration of the different metals that he's fusing together. So that really kind of uh, concludes the presentation portion of uh, Metaformation. Hopefully it gives you a nice sneak peek at what, um, what you hopefully can come and see in person. Um, so we're going to take a moment to switch cameras. And I'm actually going to put on my mask um, just so that Maria Lisa and I can be closer to one another um, in a safe manner. Uh, and I look forward to addressing your questions. So bear with us as we switch cameras. Let's see. I'm gonna stop my video and Thank you. Thank you for your Ask if they can hear. Can they hear us? Can you? Can I? Is it closer? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, can we hear if the audience can hear us? Just want a confirmation. I am not sure. I think we're still rolling, so. Okay. So we don't have any questions yet. Um, all the questions are coming in. I just want to take an opportunity to maybe get some up close looks at some of the works. So let's go over to David's red basket. So here, Maria Lisa, do you mind getting a close look at some of these details? Wonderful. So one thing too that I wanna point out, um, you can really see the leaf forms and then he's really the, the nice hammered pattern of the copper here. And then I love how he's also working with the ash, the wood, and looking at that wood grain, you know, he's really kind of picking up on that beautiful surface texture of the wood grain and the way that he's turned that handle. And I think something that's kind of harder to see in the actual image that I showed you is that rake form. So do you mind kind of maybe from this view, you can really see a nice shot of um, the rake that he's created with these, even gone and had these individual rivets, much like a real rake would have. But I think, you know, this, this piece, it's wonderful knowing that we're in fall, but also thinking about our essential workers at this time, I think it's a really great opportunity to really reflect on that and all of those individuals, um, whether you're it's your yard worker or your grocery store worker, but um, so many people that are really the life force of this economy that uh, really get recognized. And so this is a really lovely, lovely piece. Um, oh, someone is asking to see the underside of the rake. Oh, and okay, we've got the shot that they wanted, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, well, so I know I talked a little bit about Warren's recuse work with his furniture, but since we're here, I thought I would go ahead and also show Rachel David's work as well. Um, this is her helical table, but she's actually also working with a recuse technique, so she's hammering um, the under, the, the backside of the metal to create these beautiful kind of bodily um, forms uh, that then become this helix of this table leg. But it's a really beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, and I love too how she's created this wonderful, not just the top of the table, but here's like a little miniature shelf 
So really also thinking about how her furniture would function as well um, is really, really lovely detail there. And let's see, um, no more questions at this time. I think what we'll do next, oh, sorry, <laughs> why you do that? is uh, just so you can see more of the detail of Warren's work, I wanted to show you, you can really see the, the beautiful um, hammer detail of this pig head um, and really see uh, it's a very um, high level of craftsmanship that Warren exhibits. He actually, um, beyond his sculpture here, he also uh, has created um, some beautiful um, architectural um, ornamentation for his school that's kind of within the vein of this Gothic revival style of his university, as well as um, created some larger public sculptures. Um, and so we were really excited to be able to get these pieces, uh, which actually going back to this, this joke chicken piece, uh, he is actually um, working with uh, electro plated nickel, and then he's also um, working with bronze to create that beautiful um, patina that you see in the color of, of this piece. So, three different kinds of metals that he's using. And I think while we're in this space, another piece that uh, really is fun to come see up close and personal is another uh, Texas artist who, his name is Colby Brinkman. He's out of Austin, Texas. And this piece that's in front of me is called Fluctuation Portal. And if you, Marilis, so if you want to kind of move from side to side, you'll see that he's really, um, working with what's called the moiré effect. So it creates the optical illusion that the sculpture is moving based on his placement of similar closely placed, placed lines and patterns. And so you really kind of see this actual fluctuation of the metal. Uh, there are two different layers of metal that you see that is kind of giving these like really lovely um, opposing kind of um, hemispheres. Uh, and so this is a fun, fun work to experience in person. Okay, so it seems like we might be getting some more Oh, We need to slow down with the camera. Heard that. Um, and then the question was, was the entire pig head created by Repuse or is there some welding or separate pieces? So that's a very good question. Um, I do know that this piece was forged and I think, you know, I would say if you, there might be some welding potentially, I would say around the ears maybe, but that is a question that I would need to ask Warren about. That's a very good, good question. And let's see. Um, here's another unique piece that we wanted to include by Tiff Massey. If you all were here last summer, you might remember that she had a solo exhibition in our front gallery that was curated by Sarah Dero, who also curated this show. Um, this part portion was actually part of the invitational portion, but this is of her, um, it's actually a prototype of a spring that's supposed to be a large public art sculpture that one would be able to walk through. And I thought that it would be interesting to be able to include a prototype so one could really kind of see um, that process of testing material. And um, it truly does have a, a true spring form that so really has a lot of movement to it. Obviously, when it would be installed um, in its larger than life size form, that would probably be um, tethered down. But the the spring form is really kind of um, referential to um, 
uh, jewelry form that is really kind of iconic as kind of this symbol of economic vitality within the Black community. And it's really kind of a way to really represent and honor uh, the efforts that the Black community has made in uh, Tiff's hometown of Detroit. And so this sculpture will eventually be one that will be installed in Detroit. Um, and so we're really excited to be able to include this prototype. And it's really just a lovely sculpture in and of itself. And let's see, looks like we might be getting some more questions. Can we see a view from the side of the uh, Moiré piece on the wall? So, sure. So you can really kind of see the spacing between that back layer of um, metal and then the front that's really kind of creating that volume that you see. And then we have another question um, where someone is asking uh, for me to talk about the installation design, uh, whether or not there is an internal theme. And so I would say, you know, the, the pieces, because there was an open call, really, um, in terms of these sub themes, um, you know, I think that we kind of put together works in this layout that hopefully kind of bring about conversation, but it wasn't a thematic show per se. So we tried to lay out the exhibition space to encourage people to kind of think about these different aspects that are very present in blacksmithing today. So for instance, when we're looking at the front portion of the gallery, we were really kind of putting together works that we felt like were um, exhibiting um, an experimenta experimentation with process and material. So you have Johannes's work, for instance, Joshua's work, um, Mike Rossi's work, which is all the way kind of straight back, which is this wonderful inflated steel piece where Mike is actually um, blowing into uh, hot steel to create this beautiful form here, this ansible. And you also have a few pieces that are kind of off art as well. So uh, I know we went over the Mario track to pull these work. Um, but we also have this piece by Brad Nichols, which is entitled Guinea Pig. And one might think that it was made through a casting process but it really actually was all um, forged and fabricated without casting, which I think really is, uh, you know, exemplary of his skill uh, and is a very unique uh, piece in and of itself. So we also have certain areas too where we're thinking about that history of function in blacksmithing. Um, we also have an area where we're thinking about surface design and ornamentation. Um, so that's basically the, the longer answer to that question. And another good question that we have is what piece might a visitor walk by that we should slow down and look carefully at? Well, I would really say that um, I think for me is some of David Barnhill's work that I showed, which we but this is a good opportunity to get an up close and personal look at this piece that I showed you on the screen. But there's really just such a high attention to detail in this particular piece. You can really see um, how he's hammered out the spikes, as I mentioned earlier. Um, he's actually carving into the metal that's uh, composes the, the top of the piece. And then if you see down inside, you can really um, admire the, the different pattern that he's creating using that Makume Gane technique. And again, this is another one of his vessels as well, um, that is also uh, using Makume Gane. And you can really kind of see, he's also working with some different patinas to create um, 
really beautiful surface design that I think really warrants you to kind of slow down and take a closer look. And then we did get a question that says, how were the legs on the tables made? So um, I think maybe that's in reference to uh, Warren's piece. So that the, the legs themselves are not necessarily repousé. So here, if you look at the joke chicken piece, you can see where the metal is actually kind of um, twisted to create this beautiful spiral pattern down the leg. And that's, that's solid. I believe that um, the patina on it, or it's not a patina, but it's um, the coloration you're getting is from that electroplated nickel there, to that beautiful silver color. And here one might imagine that, um, you know, again, there might be some, um, hammering techniques that are creating these beautiful kind of bulbous feet. So do we have any more questions? Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today for our first inaugural craft chats. We're going to be featuring this series once a month. And you can check out the dates on our event page um, by going to crafthouston.org. And we will also be posting um, a number of different videos and virtual content on our exhibition web pages in the coming weeks. So please make sure to check that out uh, and all of the wonderful virtual programming that we're gonna be doing in addition to um, us reopening, which will be happening very, very soon. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your time. And we really can't wait to see you in person. I hope everybody can stay safe and be well. Thank you.